with it being 15 years since we had a significant storm that, that hit the Lake Charles area, I thought it would be just another storm that would miss us, or if it did hit the area, it would just go over Lake Charles and we would be back to normal within a few days. When you hear about it, you know what the worst can be, uh, but sometimes you can't imagine what the worst is. Let me stress again, it's going to continue to strengthen and it's going to come in with the force of any storm in history here in southwest Louisiana. I'm Daryl Burkell, president of McNeese State University. My name is Eddie Mesh. I'm the vice president for business affairs. I'm Richard Roden. I'm the director of facilities and plant operations. My name is Kedrick Nicholas. I serve as the dean of students and Title IX officer here at McNeese. I've lived on the Gulf Coast my whole life from New Orleans uh, over here to Lake Charles. So hurricanes were nothing unusual. But when I heard it was coming, you usually have the, the thought that, okay, it's gonna be a one or a two and that's not a big deal. We can weather those kind of storms. And then you, you keep hearing that it's intensifying. Now it's a three, now it's a four. And you're hoping that when it gets close to landfall that it hits the continental shelf and it starts to decline or it's gonna turn. But uh, at some point you realize that this is gonna be a major storm and it's going to hit. And so you have to get your family out and then you start thinking about how we're gonna to react to the property damage that this is going to cause. So you kind of brace yourself for what's coming. I was a little bit, I'll say in shock because uh, I remember what we went through with Rita. Uh, wasn't looking forward to that, uh, but we were prepared. It, since we did have that experience, uh, it made it easier for us to prepare for it. From a work standpoint, I had to prepare by notifying our students who live on campus uh, because they're residents here. Some of them, this is home for them. They don't necessarily have a place to go back. So we had to notify those students and get them prepared, which we had kind of already started doing leading up to the threat. But at some point we had to let them know, okay, we have a mandatory evacuation. We have to get you all off campus for the students who didn't have anywhere to go. We had to help them out with transportation and getting to, to public transportation services. When Laura made landfall, uh, we were in Farrah Hall with a contingent of uh, McNeese uh, personnel kind of in our uh, bunker there. And it, it hit and you could hear the winds, you could hear the rain, but all of a sudden around 2.30, the eye wall hit. And that's when you really felt the effects. You could feel the doors flexing and shaking and you would hear debris hitting the ground and coming off of uh, buildings. And the sounds that it made were pretty alarming to say the least. But when you saw trees bending sideways, and I'm talking large trees bending sideways, you realized that we were really in for it. You knew that there was significant damage that was taking place, especially when you feel a three-story building flexing and you, you feel the roof coming off and water coming down these stairwells, you realize that this is the bad storm. We came outside about 6.30 in the morning and you couldn't see the ground. It was almost like a black and white photo. The leaves were stripped from the trees, roofing was on the ground, covering the ground. You couldn't even see from one side of the quad to the other like we normally could. It really was a gut punch. Uh, really got somewhat emotional. And then Dr. Burkell came behind me and he was the same way. You do prepare yourself for what you're gonna see, but the extent and the overall breadth of the damage was really breathtaking. When you get out and you see your campus pretty much in ruins. We had over 137 buildings and structures damaged across campus. 99% of our roofs were damaged or gone completely. Holes in the roof, not just the roof and membranes, but actual holes, water pouring in. Lightweight concrete decking strewn about the entire campus. Beauregard Drive was impassable just because of the amount of debris that was there, as well as many other streets. Lots of water in the buildings, so sheetrock was wet, flooring was wet, windows broken. We had brick walls that were down, brick that was missing. We came out knowing that regardless if it was the university or if it was my home, that I would have to start getting a plan together to get through this and to get things back to uh, normal. So we came out and we, we assessed the damage, we saw the extent of the damage, and then it was a matter of getting the groups that we needed to on board to repair our campus and restore it and get it opened up. We didn't have a year to get it ready. We had to get it ready for the spring semester and continue our fall semester. 
We knew we had to get people in there immediately, start pulling stuff out. And then the president went to work and he worked with the governor directly. And he got the commitment that they were bringing people in here to give us a hand and figure it out. We worked initially. We started clearing roads. The remediation company also helped us clear some roads so we could get around. And then uh, the National Guard showed up, which was tremendous. They helped us really pick up the debris. We provided land and space for FEMA, for the Corps of Engineers, not necessarily for us, but for the community of Southwest Louisiana. Corps of Engineers was here to put blue roofs on us. Everybody is so familiar. I worked with the ORM, which is the state's self-insurance program, and then other insurers um, to provide some additional resources so we could continue to operate. We actually divided the main campus up into uh, four quads. So we had seven zones in total. They came through quickly, started assessing damages along with the assessments that my office had already started, and we were able to uh, get plans together fairly quick. You have to understand in situations like this, you don't have the luxury of time. You have to address problems right away because there are consequences that if you don't address them, could be hurtful. One of our main focuses um, early on was um, the welfare of our students, especially students who were living on campus. We sent a poll out to the students via email. That was the, the best way to know we could reach everybody and find out exactly where they were. Were they still evacuated? Were they displaced? Were they in a shelter? Um, did they have their needs met? And we utilized that information to literally make phone calls to every student who responded. And that number was over 500 students. And we just used all that information to determine what we needed to do to serve students and one of the things that we discovered was we had many students who were displaced who didn't have an option to get back here in Lake Charles and then we shifted gears to figure out where can we place those students where they're close enough to campus and have the resources they need to continue their education whenever classes restarted. Immediately we heard from several people at our peer institutions who said what do you need what can we do? One institution was ULL. We created some agreements with ULL so many of our students could stay in their dorms, could eat at their cafeteria, study in their library, and had other services that really made this much easier for them to continue their education. There was a memorandum of understanding created by the University of Louisiana system that basically uh, talked about what other our sister universities could do, eight other institutions could do to help our students who in need and that was really meaningful to us and we'll never forget that. You know, I think we broke uh, grand, new ground, new territory uh, for disaster recovery. And uh, instead of going through the normal facilities and planning process and waiting for FEMA and waiting for everyone to come in, we realized that our facilities and planning can lead the recovery process, that they can respond in a lot faster way than they thought they could. And so I think what we were able to do with facilities and planning is to devise a plan to be able to assess damage, to get plans out, to uh, get contractors on board within a two month period. And in another hurricane that came in between there, within 60 days, all of the damage was assessed, all of the uh, plans were done, all of the bids were let, and repair work started on November 1st. And so I think what we were able to do is show in this case facilities and planning that they can operate in this type of manner and the other thing I think that was important is to not try to bite off too much with a contractor divide it up into smaller contracts smaller portions so that you can get more people involved with a lot of different resources and bring up a portion of your campus at one time while there are four or five six others for us seven different zones and everyone had a different contractor and all of them bringing that zone up at one time. So for us, we, we think we broke new ground with uh, facilities and planning. I think they have a better understanding of their capabilities, that they can operate in a, in a much different manner for disasters, and that they'll be more effective for the people of, and the citizens of uh, Louisiana because of this. I was on the campus recovery team where well, we met and determined, okay, how are we gonna dig ourselves out of this? One thing that I remember is in those meetings, there was never any negativity. Nobody asked for pity. Nobody asked, 
how can we do this? It was, this is how we're gonna do this. So I think that speaks to the character of our institution. And I think that character permeates out into the South, Southwest Louisiana community. It was just a pleasure working with people that are so professional and truly had McNeese's best interests at heart. I was proud of our university and the people in it. I've been through uh, two hurricanes and, and of course COVID-19 at the same time and it's been really difficult. Um, but working with others to address those really difficult situations is something that I'll always remember. And this is my university, I'm a graduate from here and I want to see it succeed in, for a long, long time for others. People ask me to talk about McNeese and say, how would you characterize McNeese? And I tell them, well, McNeese is characterized by self-reliance and personal initiative, and that our students are career ready, and they embody the work ethic of Southwest Louisiana, and that our campus community is, is inclusive, is civil, is generous, and has an entrepreneurial spirit. And that at the end of the day, our students are gonna make a life, make a living, and make a difference in our community. And that's why we call ourselves Southwest Louisiana Strong.